Morning everybody, how are you today? What a lovely day, isn't it? Been up since about four o'clock um, and it's just about daylight then. Um, here we go. Okay, we have, um, oh, 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 lots of you, um, uh, Sharon and Mandy and Julian and Heather and Sue and Jenny and Pauline and Julie. Uh, Jenna, Lynette, hello, Teresa, Irene, hello, um, who's on Facebook, Ooh, we have um, uh, Julie, Tracy, Janet, Jackie, hello, hello, Sarah and Gillian and Jan and Susan and Karen and Judy, I'm going to miss loads of your names because we'll be here all day doing this, um, all's good here at short hours, thank you very much, Sarah, Susan, Dawn, we've got uh, Liana, hello, hope you're feeling better, Sheila, Hazel, Sharon, um, Susan, <laughs> it's, like, it's like going through the um, um, a, a book of names for babies, isn't it? Oh, who have we got? Oh, Olive, it's your birthday today. Happy birthday to you. And uh, Jan, hello. Um, I hope you're going to be celebrating um, big time, partying and, and going to clubs and discos till the early hours of the morning, all that kind of thing that we do. When, it, when it's our birthdays, don't we? If we're 18. Um, hello, Blodwin and the Cheryl. Very hot in Cyprus. Lovely. Thank you very much, Karen. It's a dress. It's a very old one, but it's it's, it's nice and cool. Uh, not sunny here, says Jan. Oh, oh, it's glorious here. Glorious. Hot and sunny in the south of France, says Michelle. Thank you, Sarah. Now then, I've got a, a few fabrics to show you. Not too many. And then I'm going to make a bag. I was going to make another bag. And um, that's why I was up so early this morning. So, so I thought I'll, um, I'll make a video first, like I did last week, and then we can have a chat about it. And then I can say the video will be live just after the live stream. You know, sometimes you come up with a brilliant idea and you spend hours making it and filming it and you get to the end and you think, didn't work, didn't work. I went back to, down to the house and I said to go, I've just wasted three hours of my life. No, it's a learning curve though. I shall figure the thing out and it will be a video. So it's uh, it was a bit of a rush coming up with the demo for you today. Um, oh, oh, Jutta, I don't know what that's, I don't know what that means. <laughs> uh, I get the hello Debbie bit, but uh, I, I don't know what the other bit is. But thank you. Anyway. Uh, oh, you're getting lots of happy birthdays, Olive. Um, it's too hot outside, so come in to watch me. <laughs> Uh, right, let me show you these fabrics. Um, I'm just going to go onto the website a sec because they're brand new and I don't know what they're called. Um, so if you go, I can show you actually, if you go to debbieshawsewing.com, which is this one, and I'm just going to go to new arrivals. And these are the ones that I'm going to be showing you. So um, those are the four new... Oh, what's that gone already? Oh, Kimmy, better get some more of that one. I didn't realise we sold out. Um, we only brought that to you on Wednesday. It's probably Rita's fault, that one. She bought loads of it. Um, oh, we've got lots of new bindings as well. Oh, let me see if I can show you some of those uh, live too, because we should have... Oh, have I got those? Have I got bindings? Sorry, I'm just shuffling things. No, I don't. Yes, I did. Do I? No. Okay talking to myself this is what happens when you get up at stupid o'clock in the morning anyway um these are the ones that i'm going to be showing you today don't forget to put your member discount code in if um if you're a half your club member for your 10 percent okay so i'll just move myself back over to that screen again hello brendan kentucky and we've got a couple of riley blakes this is really classy, isn't it? Um, premium quality cotton, because it's Riley Blake, of course. We'll using in a second. Oh, now then, let me see if I've got a mix and match to go with this one. Because I'm thinking, I might not have these in stock. Oh, I haven't brought it down with me. The, um, what's it called, Misty Blue. The Rose and Hubble Misty Blue, I think is just about that colour. Or... Maybe a grey. That would look nice as well, wouldn't it? If you wanted to go for a plain, to go with it, of course. Um, or, I wonder if the coral would go. Or maybe a burgundy. Hmm. We'll have a play with that in a bit. Um, so that's the first one. What would you make? Make a pretty dress, wouldn't it? Or a blouse. 
or a, a fabulous lining to a bag. Now, maybe shame to be shame to use that as a lining, but it's, it is absolutely beautiful. Um, right, so that's that one. Another Riley Blake, and this has got script on it. This is a really useful uh, print. I hope you received my little parcel by J Bond on Wednesday, even, oh, I can't read all of that. The writing's too small, but it is proper words. I wonder where it's from. Let's have a look, see what it says on the selfage. That'd help, wouldn't it? Um, it's just called Correspondence. Oh, Jane Austen. Oh, oh, of course. So it's a script from Jane Austen. Isn't that gorgeous? I know. Thank you, Brenda. Uh, morning, Daryl. Yeah, so that's that's a really, really pretty. And it's like um, a dark brown um, print, which if you wanted to put a dark brown with it, would be a really nice contrast. This is the Make and Believe fabric, the organic fabric, but that, that goes really well with it. Such a nice, such a nice combination. So if, I'd, I'd go for a brown if you're going to go for that one. Um, oh, oh, Liana, you've joined the club. Oh, oh, I thought you weren't allowed. Oh, congratulations, welcome along. Oh, fabulous, I'm so glad that you're there. So you, you, did you talk your dad around after all? <laughs> Fantastic. Right, so that's that one. Uh, did you get your free month as well, Liana? Remember, you get a free month if you use the code WELCOME in capital letters. So that's an early birthday present for you, isn't it? Um, we're travelling back from Wales and the internet's patchy. Oh, OK. Well, th thank you for trying to join us anyway, Christine. Um, yeah, let us know. So, Liana, your birthday is in August. How old are you going to be? 85? 14? No idea. Come and let us know. I'm making a bag, Helene, using um, some of the handles that we've got on the website. In fact, I'm being quite extravagant because I'm going to use two handles for this bag. But it was a bit, it was a bit of a rush because things went horribly wrong this morning with the demonstration that I had planned and filmed and everything. But sometimes things just don't work, do they? Um, so I was rushing around thinking, what, what, what am I going to make? So I came up with this about 20 minutes ago. <laughs> um, my hubby just said he wants a shirt made out of the Jane. That's a nice idea. That's a very nice idea. Congratulations, Leanne. She'll be 37 in August. Well, um, a few weeks away. Oh, I hope he's okay now, Margaret. Give him our love. All posit positive thoughts from everybody here. Um, oh, the first one was Jane Austen as well, was it, Laura? Honestly should do my research, shouldn't I? Um, it is Jane Austen's house. That's why Kim bought them, because they go together, don't they? Honestly, there you go. And again, I think they both go really well with the organic brown. Should read my title, shouldn't I? That's those. But I still think that the Misty Blue would manage, uh, would go well with those as well. Uh, watching it from a passenger seat while travelling to Lewin Corner for a week's break. Oh, have a lovely time, Alison, won't you? I hope the weather keeps up for you. Um, photos printed my friends were celebrating the 40th. And I've made the box for mementos as a gift. That's a nice idea. A lot has got a pink parcel coming later. Um, right, so that's those two. These, where have I, have I put them? Where have, where, have I put, where have I put my new fabrics? Tidied them away, that's what I did. These aren't going to last, is my prediction. Again, the Riley Blake, because anything with a sewing theme is just so incredibly popular. And look at these um, sewing machines and threads. They are beautiful. Um, bloopers, a bloomer's reel. <laughs> Cass. I th oh, the bloomer's reel. That'd be for after nine o'clock, wouldn't it? New meant bloopers. <laughs> um, someone's got a pink parcel. Sorry, you've gone. Dawn's been sewing all morning. What you've been making? But this, this is just lovely. I love the colours on it. They're very fresh. They're very spring-like. And I did deliberately pick up some fabrics that I thought would go so well. So this is the Make and Believe Rust. Picks up on the sewing machines. This is a very dark navy. It's not quite black. 
and that one is the Make and Believe. I think that's moss, perfect colours with these lot. That goes really well with that one. If you wanted something a little brighter, we do have the extra wide bright orange, which also works really well. And what else have we got in here? That pale blue, have I got a blue? Haven't brought them down with me. Uh, Make and Believe Gold, perfect with the, um, with the threads as well. So again, this is all the organic fabric. Would the coral go? No, I don't think we've got a coral. There's a pink in there as well. So we do have a, a homespun pink, which would work. These colours, aren't they nice together? These kind of really, um, I wouldn't even go for that. I'd go for one of these three with either of them, to be honest. They're, they're really kind of natural colours, very warm colours, but I think they, they all go so well. That would make a really nice piece of patchwork, wouldn't it? All of those colours together. Um, we'll get in any more sea foam. At the moment, Karen, our supplier hasn't got any more sea foam and we're on their waiting list. So we're going to see them on the 13th, which, oh, look at the selvage on that, just noticed. Fabulous. I mean, cut that off and use it, won't you? Um, which I think is on Thursday. So if there's any lingering in the warehouse um, that they've hidden away somewhere, then we'll forage it out and bring it back. But otherwise, hopefully, we'll be finding out exactly when they're, they're coming back in stock again. Um, Carol's got a hedgehog panel. Oh, fabulous. Um, would a half metre enough for a craft bag? Um, for the half yard club craft bag? No. I think you'd need to order a metre and you'd have some left over. Um, because for the craft bag, I, yeah, you'd need a metre. I used half a metre for the one with the paint splats on it, but I used the extra wide backing fabric, which is um, 2.7 metres wide. So, yes, you'd need a metre for this one. Um, cutting a reversible sun hat. Oh, going to be doing some more sun hats. Mm. I'm glad you like it. I'm glad you like it, Leanna. And... Um, Morning, Karen. Lovely day. It would be nice to take the machine outside to sew. I've tried that before, but you can't see anything when it's when it's that bright. Those just go, oh look, those just go so nicely together, don't they? I'm having a moment here. I love mixing and matching fabrics and colours and stuff together. Um, we um, when me and Kim do orders, we. we we don't do them very often, that's Tyler's department, but every now and again, if it's really busy, then we'll meet up at the office and we'll do some orders. Um, and it, it's it's so nice when um, when you put different colour combinations together and we have all moments. So, for instance, can we be saying, right, well, one of those need one of those. Well. <gasps> oh, that's nice. And occasionally you pick out colours in a fabric that we haven't seen and put them together and we're, oh, look how well that worked. We get so excited about your orders. It's, it's um, yes, it's, it's really nice. It's really fun. Sometimes we get um, some of you that just order lots and lots of blue shades of something or everything's pink. Oh, I wonder what you're going to make with those or just you love pink and no other colours. Anyway, um, it does go great with a mustardy colour. I, I just, I, I just, I think they're fabulous. I wouldn't be, or oh, the green, Jan, is the make and believe. I think it's moss. I'm just going to have a look on the website again you may as well have a look while i'm there if you go to fabric plain cotton and these are all the plains moss green so oh no it's is that the rose and hubble oh just bear with me a second because we've got two mosses oh hold the line oh second moss isn't on there yet so yes it'll be the rose and hubble moss it's that one. Um, I, we do have, I was saying to you the other day, we do have so many planes coming in at the moment. Um, we need to take a swatch of all of them and label them and, and compare them together because Rose and Hubble do a moss, um, but Make and Believe do a moss and they're, they're slightly different. So if that's the both of them. No, that's the same one. Um, so yes, we need to do a, a shade chart for you. Shall we do some sewing? What plane would go with the B fabric on the website is is the grey. Um, 
I've used actually calico with that one, um, like on the bee bag. The bee bags, bear with me a second, that I did for Create and Craft. Um, I just used calico because it's the same. I, I like the organic kind of feeling. I, I like calico. I like the fact that it's got like, little seed bits of the seed pods and you know there's flecks in it and everything it looks it just looks very organic and natural and i thought that went really well with um with that it's not exactly the same color but it's the same kind of feeling that very natural feeling um fabric wise it's a, a warm gray that isn't it i'll have to have a look i think kim's going to the office tomorrow so, so I'm just trying to see if I've got anything here. I've got quite a lot of fabric here. But I don't have one that would match that. Um, I'd have to have a look and see if we've got anything exactly that colour because it's more of a taupe. We do an extra wide. I'm back over on the website again. Um, light taupe. That would probably go. The make and believe organic light taupe. I think would go really well but again I'd need I need to actually see it in person just to um just to make sure right just about there um oh, any news on the pvc not yet alana they still haven't got any stock i'm afraid um heather's just ordered the jane austen chocolate brand they do let me show you those again the uh, they're really classic designs let alone being Jane Austen themed but that's what you've ordered look and don't they just go so well together they're just absolutely timeless beautiful fabrics what are you going to make Heather when you saw that oh actually they go really nicely with the handles that I'm using today these these are very very dark brown um, but if you wanted to make a bag with those then that that would look fabulous dusky mauve Oh, Linda, I haven't got that one here, I don't think. Let me have a... Let me double-check what colour Dusty Mauve is. Uh, burgundy. Mulberry. Where's Dusty Mauve? Um, oh, Silver Mink might go with the bee fabric, actually. Anyway, I haven't got a piece with me, so I can't show you anyway. Um, dusty Mauve, Dusty Mauve. I can't see Dusty Mauve. Oh, the plain cotton chrysanthemum red. I know we've got stock of as well, so if you're waiting for that, I'll put it back in stock again later. Um, a bag with a Jane Austen brand, that would be a nice idea. It's just, it's just you know, all year round kind of colours as well, aren't they? They're just lovely. Anyway, so that, that would make a nice combination. Uh, would the batik be strong enough for your lightweight fold-away pop dope bag? Yes, batik's quite a strong fabric. Um, Heather, if you put handle into the search bar, I know they're on though because I had a look this morning. Uh, showing you the website again, hang on a minute. Um, so go up here and just put H-A-N-D-L-E search. It comes up here, look. They're called the Eden because originally um, we designed a bag with tree fabric, which is the Eden tree fabric, so that's why it's called Eden. <laughs> is it too hot outside, Bob? Did you hear that? She's just coming and flopped on the floor, just literally flop. Hello, Margaret. Um, Leanna, you would have had to put the code WELCOME into the coupon box in capital letters. Um, if you didn't, email me and let me know and I'll forward it. Or actually, you could email um, the info at halfyardsewingclub.com email address. It's on the website. So just go to contact and say, I forgot to put my code in. Please can I have a free month? And they should be able to sort that out for you. Um, for you want a quilt competition for creative use of leftover fabric. Oh, fabulous! Um, <laughs> last thing she won was a blue Peter badge in the 70s oh thank you 
Oh, well, that's really sweet. The court's off to the Ukraine. Oh, how lovely. Um, my dog is... Oh, um, Amanda's dogs are flopping. It's floppy dog weather at the moment. I tell you what, it's floppy chicken weather at the moment as well. They're so funny. They dig themselves holes, make dust baths. I've got, I've got dips all over the garden like this. I've got a dip in my new thistle plant. I don't know why they decided to dig that up. I've only just planted it. Um, press on this easy, press it, but oh, also, awesome. um, but they <laughs> they share holes, and the, the two white fluffy ones were together in one hole, and it was just this one leg sticking out from each side yesterday. They look like one big fluffy chicken with two feet sticking out, they were hilarious. Um, oh, we had did I tell you? Did I tell you we had sparrows behind the bath panel? I think I might have done. I think I might have told you that. All rescued and back with the mums anyway. Um, oh, all, yes, don't forget to put the water out for the birds. We've got um, a pond in the garden. I put welcome. That's the one, Leanna, you say the first month you won't, be, you won't pay for. Well done. Um, reverse applique pillow. What reverse applique pillow? This one isn't, oh, that's not reverse applique, is that the one you meant? That is um, Hawaiian applique, that's one of the projects from Half Yard Club. Oh, there we are, there we go, there's a mouse, just fell off there. Mouse is, mouse is face down. Um, the bag behind the houses fabric. Not at the moment, sally -Ann. This is the one that I was, um, I was doing the video for this morning. And I got all the way through to finishing it, and I just thought, you know, it's a very complicated way of finishing the end of the zips. Um, so I didn't want to do it. So um, I shall get round to doing that again and finish it off properly. But yes, that's the house fabric is lovely, isn't it? And I've used the chrysanthemum red with that one. The blackbirds, Christine, have fledged. They've gone. So have the sparrows. Um, yes, Heather, we will have to. We can combine the orders. Um, if you've placed two orders, we can refund the postage on one of them. Um, my cat has just done the same, just coming in and flopped down. <laughs> it's floppy animal weather. <laughs> um, da, 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 just spotted the mouse. And right. Okay, shall we do a little bit of sewing? Um, oh, Helen, Helen says, can you press the thumbs up? Now I'm using some of the canvas that we've got on the website. I've already cut some bits out, so this was a, a little bit of a <laughs> what am I going to do? Um, a look at the baggy work on this morning. No, because the end of it's not right. I need to work on the zip. So it's got two pockets on the front, it hasn't got pockets on the inside and it's got a curved section on the top, but I, I, need, to, I need to work on the end of the zip for that one. So it may be a little bit different to how it looks there. Um, the green cushion is a Half Yard Club project, Andrea, that is um, Hawaiian applique. Pretty, isn't it? Nice for this time of year. Um, so can you show us how to make a nappy holder? I did something, didn't I? Um, no, it was a wet white holder. Do you remember I did that live? I must do a video of that one. Um, can when you're showing us how to make a Mary Poppins bag, you keep it to your side, you'll need one like that, it holds so much. What Mary Poppins bag? I haven't got a Mary Poppins bag. Um, some people watch via the TV, so I wonder if access to the thumbs up unless I went onto the mobile. Oh, thank you, Sarah, I didn't know that. Um, what's the blue bag with a butterfly clasp? That was a kit um, that we had. There is a video on how to fit the butterfly clasp. We've got the clasps on the website, um, but we don't have the kit anymore. Wipes and nappies. I did. Yeah, it, it, it'll probably fit two nappies in one side and wipes in the other side, didn't I? Um, right, OK. So this is the fabric that I'm going to use which is one of the canvases. I just think that is so pretty. And um, so I'm just moving myself out of the way. 
Um, but it's very soft and it's very easy to work with as well. And this is something that um, could be all year round, couldn't it? It could be winter, it could be summery. Um, I'm using this with a, that's the Highland Lavender. And I'm using Bosal Foam as well. Stuff down this out. <laughs> The stuff down my, it's actually on a, on a I've got a, a table down here with just a pile of fabric just in case I need anything, need anything to show you. Um, right, so here we go, this is what I've done. I just need to re-measure this because I can't remember how I put it. So across that way, 13 inches one way and 11 inches this way. So this is the Bosal foam, Ooh, which is like a, a thread magnet, look at this. And then I've cut out a one and a half inch square from each bottom corner. And um, do I have any experience, I'm just putting the iron on, of making cotton fabric waterproof? The only thing I've used there is the OD coat, which is a gel that you spread onto the fabric and then leave it to set. And I think, I think I'm right in saying if you do three coats of it, that makes it waterproof. Um, there was a question earlier, wasn't there, which he said. Oh, that's, I saw a question saying, what's, oh, that, there you go, Kaz, what's your favourite thing that I've made? Do you know, it tends to be the last thing that I made. <laughs> it changes all the time. So th this bag will probably be the, my favourite thing that I've made. Um, oh, I don't know, Maddie, probably. I think it would probably be this young lady partly because she's so popular i love making toys anyway and she's a bit of a she's a bit of a fashion icon so i like making clothes for her as well so yeah she's she's probably my fav very favorite thing anyway and could you use brown handles on a small bamboo bag pattern i don't see why not on that one yes yes of course you could yeah because you just um clip them on They've got um, lobster claw clasps on the end of them. So, yeah, you could just clip those on instead. You need some D-rings. Uh, we've got gold D-rings on the website. Um, failed at the... Have all the fabric sounds out here. Oh, OK, Gillian. Right, I'm, I'm glad we're helpful. Um, seen a spray at the hardware store to make fabric waterproof. Oh, I've not, I've not heard of a spray, Brenda. That would be interesting. Oh, hands on grandma duties. I have lovely. Right, so I'm going to just bring the ironing board up, and I've cut out my fabric to an inch bigger all the way around. Uh, an inch bigger, so it's half an inch bigger all the way around. So I'm not going to take the foam into the seam allowance, basically. So. Scratchy side is the let's move that out the way is the adhesive side. So you'd normally iron from the fabric side, but I need to make sure that this is placed properly in the centre. So I'm just going to hover the iron over here a second and hopefully some steam will come through, just so that I can hold it in place before I turn it over. And um as Maddie Ford Oh <laughs> Turn around. Come on. You're not looking at everybody. She's she's not fixed into the swing very well, so I'm just a bit concerned she's going to fall off it. <laughs> yeah, she's completely ignoring you. Hi, Raina. Right, so I've got some steam travelling through there now, so it's it's not stuck well, but it's he but it's held in place, so I can now turn over and iron from the right side. This would be a really nice one to quilt as well. I'm, I'm not going to, um, because it uh, will take me all day. Um, but f the foam is a really, really lovely um, interfacing to, to uh, quilt through because the, the stitches just really sink into it. Um, <laughs> Fee's husband, sitting on the other side of the room, Shush! Thank you! So 
sounded really rude, didn't it? If you're watching on Facebook, Fee just said, tell my old man to shush. <laughs> He's listening from the other side of the room and asked why we're selling earrings now. Uh, the foam took the iron heat really well. No, busy. It, it it really does. It, it likes. This is the Bosal foam. Um, it likes heat, so as hot an iron as your fabric will take, and steam. I'm, I'm not sure about other foams, but Bosal really likes steam. Um, it will. Be, oh, my branded Bosal is going to be back in stock at the end of next week as well. We're picking that up on on Wednesday, so that's. Um, That'll be nice, that's pre-cut half metre pieces. There's my name splashed all over them. Is the fabric upside down? I don't know if it... Mm. I didn't think it was directional. Nice thing is, while it's still warm, you can peel it off. I thought it was a non-directional fabric. We'll do it all over again then, thank you. Thank you, oh, thank you for spotting that. So we'll do the same thing all over again. Um, yeah, thank thank you, Pat. Uh, any clothes for PJ the Mouse coming soon? Yes, um, maybe not soon. It'll he is having an outfit later on this year, and maybe maybe a book coming out. Um, but it won't be for another 18 months or so, but that, that it'll have friends in that one as well. Um, Shelley says, I love both, I've used it many times in all kinds of bags. Um, no, Sheila, he did ask me if I wanted a coffee and I said, it's too warm, it's too warm for a coffee. So he's, um, he's put a can of Coke in the freezer for me. Cool refreshments today. I just got the fabric a little bit creased on that. Um, but as I said, while it's while it's still warm and steamy, you can peel it back and take out any creases, like that one. So just peel that back and flatten it out a little bit. Um, right. Oh, hi, Rita. You've missed some fabric. Do you know, I wouldn't be surprised if the fabric's gone now, to be honest. Um, Fusible fleece and foam have to be quilted. No, it doesn't have to be quilted at all. No, I'm not going to quilt this one. Um, I just think it looks nice when it is, that's all. Right, I think I'm going to be over the top with that now. Uh, right. So, I just need to, I just need to see what I'm doing. Bear with me, there we go. So I'm just cutting out, again, about half an inch or a centimetre thereabouts seam allowance and I'm use, going to use the edge of the bosal as the seam. Okay so that's that. That's the other piece that I've already done and then use this whole piece as a template to cut this out from the lining. Okay so that's the size of the fabric not the size of the foam. So that's the lining. Then I've also got four four inch square pieces and four D-rings. So I'm going to sew these on, am I doing that next? Yeah, let's do that next. And I'm also going to put a zipped pocket on the inside and I'm going to be extravagant and make the pocket out of the canvas because I had loads of it. So with each piece here, I'm going to fold to the center. These are going to be too long. I'll cut them down in a bit and then short sides to the centre and then in half making a bag carol um, I cut the fabric wider than the bosal Andrea because I'm using the edge of the bosal to sew along if I cut it to the same size then the bosal would be included in the seam and I don't want the bosal in the seam I just want the fabric in the seam so that's that's why I cut it that way so let's do this with all four fabrics Oh, Christine's ordered the sewing fabric. I'm, I'm amazed it's still there. I mean, we had loads, but um, I just thought I thought that would go straight away. Morning, Shirley Hurley. Sunny in Spain, lovely. Have a, hope you're having a wonderful time. 30 degrees. Right. So do the same with all of these. 
Uh, the calico will be back in stock. Um, calico. That can be back in stock this afternoon. If you go on the uh, on the wait list, that's the same for anything that we are out of stock of. If we're going to get more stock of it, we'll leave it on the website, even though it says out of stock. Um, and you can go on to the wait list. So, and in fact, it's, it's really useful if you do. I'm going to show you the website again. Right, so go over here. Um, so, for instance, Calico, let's take you off there. C A L I C O. And out of stock. But if you click on it, keep me updated. Okay, so if you put your email address in there, tick the box and then click on keep me updated. As soon as it comes back in stock again, you will receive an email to say that it's back in stock. Hello, Angela. First time she's caught alive. Welcome along. Um, okay, so, no, so, no, so just doing the same with all these four pieces. Again, these are too long. Um, Right, so are, are, are the handles in stock? I can't find them. If you search for handles, yes, they are, unless they've sold out already. Hang on a minute. Um, I know we've got lots of them, so hopefully they haven't gone. If you go into that search bar again and put in hand or or, just put handle into the search bar, out of stock. Um, go onto that wait list. I know we've got lots of stock of those, so they will be back in stock any time now. Um, Kim, if you're watching, can you put some back in stock now? I didn't realise that there were so few actually on the website, but we do have stock. OK, we'll, it, they will be there. Bear with me. As soon as I finish this live, I will go and put some more back in stock for you. Um, right, because I can't do it live. Uh, Double-sided bow, so by mistake. Um, Sandra, yes. Um, you can make anything like, like placemats if you put some bias binding around the edge of them. But a way that you can use it, if you've got some greaseproof paper, I'm just going to sew down each side of these, okay? If you have greaseproof paper, then put that underneath the bosal as you iron the fabric onto the top so the bosal doesn't stick to your ironing board. And that way it's only going to be fused to your, um, to your fabric. You'll still have the, the potential of... Um, the glue on the other side but you, you can still use it if you wanted to use it in in a singular manner by doing that um, hi Lindsay morning right so this is all I'm doing look just sewing down each side don't go on all four pieces there or they're dropping off the end of the table man the last one here okay And then these are going to go to the top of each side of the outer bag through a D-ring. So thread that through there, fold it over, best side up. And these are going to go to the top of the bag. Now remember the bosal is, um, is where the seam's going to go. I think that's going to be a little bit too long. I'd like it to be closer to the edge. So I'm just going to trim about half an inch off the ends of these. And I'll do that with each one. And these I'm going to pop bigger ruler, Deborah. So we can work out 
exactly where I want them to go simply by putting the handle in place and seeing where it looks right. So I'm going to go three and a half inches from each side, facing downwards, and again I'm going to chop an inch off there. So these are in effect four inches by three inches now. Through a D ring and three and a half inches, that'll be there. Now, I don't know which day I'm going to the Festival of Quilts yet, Shirley. I might go on the first day. Um, first days tend to be quieter, don't they? So that'll be the Thursday. But I shall let you know nearer the time. I'm pretty sure it'll be the Thursday, but I need to look at dates and just make sure my daughter is in the country at the time. Because she's got holidays in August. But if she's on holiday, I should just come on me own. Uh, right, so that goes through there. And I'm just using the first piece to line that up so they're in the same position on both sides of the bag. Uh, these are gold, Caroline, because the ends of the um, handles are gold, so I thought they'd match. That goes there. And then I'm just going to sew those in place. So just quite close to the edge. Same with this one. And oh, how are you getting on with your Juki Blodwin? I'm loving it. I'm still learning with mine, to be honest. I still don't know what all it does. I've started my second year subscription. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. Um, I've learned so much and gained so much confidence. Rita made a beautiful dress. My granddaughter just couldn't resist the Jane Austen fabric, one of my favourite authors. Oh, oh, I'm so pleased you like it. Right, so that I'm going to put to one side for now because in the lining, I'm going to do a letterbox zip because I haven't done one for a while. So first thing I'm going to do is to fold the lining in half just to crease the centre. Um, no, Angela, you don't need a heavy duty sewing machine. You may need a denim needle. That's a heavy duty needle. A denim or a jeans needle. It's a strong needle. So they're designed to go through thicker fabrics. But your machine will be fine. You don't need anything special from your machine. Hello, Robin from Kansas. They're each, Erica. We sell them singularly um, because the original bag that they were designed for um, only had one handle to it. So that, that is each. Right. So I've creased the centre mark and I'd like the zip to kind of be across here. So I'm going to measure. You could do quite a big one, actually. How wide's my fabric? I've got a piece of leftover fabric that I'm going to use for the pocket, which is 11 inches. So I'm going to make this nine inches long, and that's about two and a half inches, three inches from the top. So just make sure that's central and um, straight. And then we'll take a pen. And go up to the nine. And I'm going to draw a box half an inch wide by nine inches. Like so. Oh! Hi, everybody. <laughs> Did you tell them all it's summer here? Oh, I think everyone knows it's summer. Do you like my speedos? 
<laughs> Your Bacardi and Coke. Oh, go on. <laughs> Thank you. Like, you don't like Bacardi. I don't like Bacardi. It's uh, a Coke. Neat. Neat Coke. Neat Coke. That's going to get me talked about. Oh, that's nice. I've got a straw as well. Oh, lovely. <laughs> so, I've got a box. Um, Beverly, there is a... Is it still on there, Laura? Um, a bag for the outside, uh, for a mobility scooter. Um, I've got one on... I haven't got it here to show you. There is one on the Half Yard Club. Um, <laughs> Laura loves the Speedos. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I've, I've already done one there, on the Half Yard Club. It's a project there. Ice coffee. Oh, I don't like. I don't. I don't like iced coffee. Ooh. I'm going to draw a line halfway down the centre, and a little V shape at each end, going into the corner. Right. Then this is going to go. Oh, I should have drawn that on this bit actually, shouldn't I? Silly me. That should go on the pocket. Let me measure this, and we'll do it again. Got all distracted there, did it on the wrong bit. Um, so that's 14 inches by 12 inches. And let's re redraw the box three inches from the top. Doesn't really matter whether it's on this side or the other, it's just easier for placement if you do it on the pocket. Line down the middle. and then draw into the corners, like that. Okay, um, I'm just going to iron away that pen mark that I just made. Right. Then this is going to go right sides together here. Do you know, it's, been, it's going to be one of those days today, isn't it? That's in the wrong place now. Ignore that last bit. If I was recording this, then I would have um, edited that bit out. So my box needs to go... Let's do an inch and a half from the top, all right? So nine inches centrally. There. Um, I mustered a letterbox zip, says Andrew, using my builder bag. Oh, oh the temp it's got a template in there for a zip, hasn't it? That's right. Right, then down the centre. V-shape at the end. Right, that's three boxes I've drawn, so hopefully that will be the last one. This then goes right sides together to the lining. More than the seam allowance away from the top, because remember I've got a half inch seam allowance. So I do that about three quarters of an inch from the top and sit it centrally like so. And I'll stick a few pins in there just to hold it together before I sew. And then we'll shorten the stitch length. I'm going to go down to a 2.2 and sew all the way around the box. I don't think we know we've got air erasable, haven't we? I'll, um, I'll have to ask Kim Laura to have a look for a supplier for the heat erasables. I don't know if I've ever done those. So, needle down and turn around, and literally I'm sewing just around the outside of the box. So I just had a, a thinking moment there. Okay, out come the pins, uh, tell me the name of the bag, 
where you use the gold rings. Which bag, Irene? Oh, the big, the big round rings. Um, that was the curved top tote, which is download on the website. Right. So I've got that. Now I'm going to cut along that line down the centre and into the corners. So snip into there. Floppy dog again. And close to the stitches, but don't go through them. That can be closer. Right into the corner here. <laughs> oh, I don't have anything in Coke, Andrea. I don't very often have Coke, to be honest. It's nice on a hot day, though, isn't it? And there and there. And then back to the iron again. And I'm going to post all of that fabric through the hole. And I find it easy, just give it a quick press as it's going through. And that one. And then Pull it right through until the seam's right on the edge, and then we'll press it. And same on the top, and then press it. And this is the side that we're going to see, so I just want to make sure these corners are nice. So I'm just going to pull them out. I'm just going to put that off. a bit more water in my iron. So I've got some steam coming up. This mat, no, we do have ironing mats, they're a bit smaller than this, on the website. Um, in fact, there might be an A3 one on there as well, which is bigger than this one, which open out and they've got cutting mats on the inside. This one I actually made, um, so if you have a look back through, it was a couple of years ago and it was in a January, was it January the 2nd, 2020, I think, um, I made this one live. So that'll be on Facebook and on YouTube, got water everywhere now, look. So again, just pulling that open and giving it a good old press. There. Right, now the zip needs to go on. I'd normally use my fabric glue pen, but I've left it down at the house, so I'm going to pin it. So the zip's way too long, so let's chop off the stoppers off the end of it, and that needs to be just a bit bigger than the hole. And we'll stick a few pins in there. In fact, I'll do the top and the bottom. You need to place it. Actually, it might be easier to do it this way, look. But we need to place this so that the zip is right in the centre of the gap. This is where the glue pen comes in really handy because you can manoeuvre it around a little bit as well. Um, that'll do. So when you find you run out of pins, I, I, I go through so many pins, I don't know what happens to them. Now if you want to be really accurate with this, it would be an idea to sew this by hand, to tack it or to baste it. Um, before you commit to the sewing machine. But for speed's sake, I'm just going to go for it. There we go. 
Yeah, Andrew, I've left it down at the house. I was using it down there, and I only seem to have one at the moment. Um, so we'll just line that up. Like so. Although I've got a shop full of them, I could just bring some more back, couldn't I, really? Perks of having a shop. Um, Double-sided tape. Is that quilter's tape, do they call it? I've not used that, Katrina, but yes, I think that would work well too. But I haven't got any of that either. Um, one here, like so. That will do. Right, then I'm going to sew all the way around the box. And I am using black thread, which isn't ideal, but where should we start? There. Okay. So back up to my 2.4 detour uh, default stitch length and just top stitch all around. Straight across the end. And back down this side. So when I come up to the slider, stop with the needle down, foot up, and manoeuvre it out of the way. Go on, off you go. That's it. Obviously, you'll be taking more time if you're going to do this at home. And remember, these, these videos, both on YouTube and on Facebook, are here forever. So if you wanted to have a watch back later on and miss the chat or mute me and just watch the video, then of course you can do. Almost back to the beginning. There we go. So let's have these pins in the pin cushion before I lose these. Um, a preference for pins, says Brenda. Always order to a fat pin. A discussion on sizes would be wonderful. I prefer a thin pin. I like a thin pin. I like a long thin pin. These thin pins are fine, but they are a little bit short. But I do like a long thin pin with a big head myself. So I can see them, basically. And a thin pin doesn't leave big holes, does it? Um, I'll see you Wednesday. Bye, Liana. <laughs> oh, Alana, well, I think I think I might get muted a lot. Right, so that's where we are. So zip section, and we're going to fold it over. I can trim the end of that back a little bit now. That's a little bit too long. Then I'm going to fold over the lining and sew round these three sides, but not through this bit. Okay. So with that folded out of the way, I'm only sewing through the pocket. Okay. So when I come up to the corner here, again, I'm going to fold the actual bag lining out of the way and just go through the pocket. And the same here, that out of the way, and just go through the pocket. What can you see, Bob? Hello, sweetie. You're hot. Hey, puppy. Hello, sweetie. I wonder if I can just move the camera a little bit to show you one very hot dog. Hey, sweetie. No. Hey, Bob. <laughs> That's it. That's it for the day. Uh, you can watch. Katrina says, that's the nice thing about YouTube. You can watch and decide if you're going to try the project, gather your supplies when you have time, and then stop and go as you needed when you're working on it. Very true. Um, Janet wishes I was long and thin, but I do have a big head. <laughs> I used to be long and thin. Short and wide these days. Right, so 
that's how it looks from the lining side. That's from the top. And when I open it up, I got a lovely view through the, through the lining. Right now, we can just put the rest of the bag together. So right sides together, making sure that your D-rings are facing inwards. And we'll sew across the top. And I'm going to sew up against the edge of the, um, of the foam. So it doesn't matter if you catch the foam, I'd rather you didn't. But don't go on picking if you do happen to catch it. Okay, make sure the D-rings are facing in. So. And by sewing against the edge of the foam, it gives a nice crisp seam when we turn this over as well. And then... <laughs> Rita. It does allow you shouting when you use capital letters, doesn't it? I think it's funny. It gets everybody's attention, though. Doing the same with this side, so just so straight across the top. My two dogs are wearing their wet pool coats. I didn't know if you had a wet pool coat. They don't like them, but they work. I don't, we've got um, part of the pond, which is shallow, which Gary built deliberately so the dogs can go in and cool down, but uh, she, she won't go in it. She'll go in the duck pond in the village. Terrified of rain, but quite happy in a duck pond. Just not in our pond. You hey, Bob. Um, don't cut your D-ring. No, make sure your D-rings are out of the way. If your D-ring tabs may be a little bit short, you can always put the zipper foot on your sewing machine so that you don't actually sew over them. Hello, Julie Jones. So I've got that. You could easily do it with H640, Laura, yes. I just wanted um, a firmer bag because I thought it suited the handles, to be honest. Right, so, I thought what I was doing for a sec. These two are now going to go right sides together. I'm going to line up the seams at the side. Not worried about seams being open to one side or... However they go, I tend to put them in opposite directions and line up the seams here. So that's the top of the bosal, lined up with the top of the bosal. That one looks a bit narrower, why is that? That's it. Okay, so that's that. And let's do that. And then I'm going to sew just around the edge so you can feel where the bow saw's lined up and I'm just going to sew around the edge of the outer pieces to start with and again I'm just sewing against the edge of the bow saw so I can, I can feel I can feel where that is if you use H640 Laura it's not necessary to trim it back to the seams. It'll sit inside the seams without bulking them out too much. And then down the side. Again, just feeding it up against the edge of the needle, just sewing alongside the foam and again it just doesn't matter if it does get caught a little bit don't worry too much about that and back down here and then we'll do the same on the lining obviously I've got no foam on the lining side oh hi Lisa so I'm going to use the same seam allowance, which is about half an inch or a centimetre, and sew all the way down. And I will need to leave a turning gap. Oh, 
I won't forget the turning up, I'm going to leave it in the side. I normally as well change the colour of my thread for the same colour. I've got black against lilac here, which doesn't really look too good. But no one's going to look inside. And then back down this side. Turning up. Not forgot. And back to the beginning. Then let's pull this open. Squish that so that the edges are together. And sew straight across here. I normally squish the seams in opposite directions when we do this. All right, this is getting quite bulky now, but take control. Nice and straight. And go straight across. Good day, Kate. Oh, she had a daughter's dance recital tonight. Oh, how lovely. So same with this one. And so straight across. I do use some of the bags, Andrea. Um, bigger ones normally and I do use quite a few as storage look nice with a large ring handle yes it would do Laura that would but that would be really nice with the large rings right, let's pull this open in the same way and sew across so we, are we midday yet hottest part of the day isn't it might do some gardening and that. And then the same on this one. Then we're just about done. There we go. So back down. Hi, Chris. Right. And then let's turn this the right side out. Like so. Chris, Chris is talking thongs. Got the right weather for it, I suppose, Chris. Now, some of the bosal is lifting up, um, but don't worry, because you can iron it back down again when we're finished. Um, thanks, Lisa. Will you be spoilt for choice of all the bags you have? <laughs> I love making them. Bags are one of my favourite things to make. Different shapes and sizes. I like, in fact, it's not so much the making them, it's the figuring out. Like with that bag that I made this morning. Not quite figured it out properly yet, but I will do. Um, but just coming up with something that's a little bit different or a different way of making things or more unusual fabrics or pockets and things like that. I was going to put a pocket on the outside of this one, but I thought they... Uh, it might spoil the look of the fabric. Right, let's push out the corners. And just make sure I've caught all of the fabric as well, because sometimes you don't. That's looking fine. We'll sew the opening closed. So pull each side away from you to make the edges curl in. And again, I'm using black. Don't I wouldn't normally use black on this colour because you will see these stitches, but you get the gist. And then 7.10 in New York. The day's just starting. See, Rita's in New York, Elsie. You could be neighbours. You never know. And then let's give it a press. So because I've sewn up against the edge of the foam, I should have that nice neat seam right on the top, just where we want it. And again, plenty of steam with this one. Oh, thanks, Andrea. And then I'll top stitch around the top. I don't seem to be steaming too well. Maybe I'm just not hot enough. 
So again, keep this right on the edge. Sandra made a dog treat poop bag this week and really pleased with it. Oh, jolly good. How many hours sleep do you need as you get up so early? Um, oh, I've got water pouring out now. Well, bear with me a sec. I don't sleep too well. And particularly when it's light in the mornings. And I like getting up early. So maybe five or six. But I, I love that first thing in the morning time. It's when I answer my emails. Um, it's when I can come up with ideas. So I seem to be more creative at stupid o'clock in the morning. I love it when it's so quiet. I love listening to the birds when the daylight first comes and they're all singing and chirping. I loved it this morning because I think it's the first morning, Gary was saying, where first thing in the morning it's warm enough to actually sit outside. Because yesterday it was actually quite cold in the morning, but today it's just been lovely. So yeah, I love that. I love the quiet. That's my, my best time of the day, so I like to get up really, really early. Um, all right. Oh, while we're here, while I've got the iron on, if you do have any bits lifting up, then stick your ham inside and just go back over and steam it back down again. So I've, that's all I've done. Look. Stick your ham in and hot iron, plenty of steam, and it'll just re-stick it down. And while I'm there with the ham, a good time to press out the base of it as well. Just get the seam nice and, nice and flat on the base. So I lifted up, it? Yeah, lifted up there a little bit as well. That's fine, it happens. There we go. Sharon, if, if you prim, your prim iron should steam quite quite a lot. You can can you see that pouring out of there? It has to be on hot and make sure you've got your steam button up because if you press that down, it's off. It doesn't take a lot of water. I'm on maximum there now. Um, but yeah, just make make sure it's at its hottest, otherwise it, it won't steam. Okay, that should do for that. Iron off, Laura. Yeah, I don't know what's going on out there, June. She's, uh, she's having a bit of a bark at somebody. It's, it's all a play thing, but it frightens people to death. We've got um, iron gates at the end of the driveway. It sounds very grand, doesn't it? And um, people walk straight past the house and she gets all excited and runs over to greet them. That's all it is. She's just got a, a bit of a bark on her. Right, let's push that under here and I'm just going to top stitch all around there. So I'm going to lengthen the stitch. I'm going up to a three now. And just so my own was a bit driz dribbly. I've got a wet bag. Shows how to sew a ham to press bags. I made one, Carol, in my book, Sewing Room Accessories. Um, in fact, I think there's two in there. There's one that's that shape. Did I make two? No, I didn't. I made a bag-shaped one. So you can make them any shape you like. I did I make two. Um, but basically, it's got a, a square top. And the one thing that these that you buy don't have is somewhere to put your hands. So I made mine with a flap over the front so you can put your hand inside it and then hold it against the um, against your bag. So yeah, have, have a look in that book, Sewing Room Accessories. Um, oh, hello, Grandma Helen. Watches every Saturday morning. That's Lily's Grandma. Hello. Got a hot dog again. I had chickens in here this morning while I was filming. Hi, Sheena. It's all right, we're still here. We're a bit late ourselves. It's quarter past 12, look. Half the day is gone. Um, she's just saying, come see me, I want to be a friend. <laughs> she is, actually, that's, that's all it is. Any it, Bob? Okay, so that's how we're looking. So I've just top stitch around the top, so I've got a nice big pocket on the inside with my fancy lining. And then these just clip on. Like so it could probably do with some weight in the bag and hang it for a little while to get the handle to just stay narrower, if that makes sense. Pop this one on this side. 
the neck clips on there. Hello Janine in um, Louisiana, welcome along. And that's that. So again, I think with a little bit of weight in it, that's going to hang really nicely. The hardware makes a difference, doesn't it? That's what makes it look a really expensive bag. And I wouldn't go any smaller with those handles than a bag of that size. But with the handles, they're long enough to go over your shoulder, which I like. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not one for a handbag or an arm bag. I do like a shoulder bag myself. Um, so again, use the, the idea. It's ever so simple. You can make a huge bag from this. You could put a flap on the front. You could have a magnetic snap to close it over. Um, pockets on the outside, pockets on the inside, however many you need. But I just think that is, I think that's really stylish. The, the fabric's gorgeous, isn't it? But you can use any fabric that you like for it. And again, I've used Bosal foam because it's nice and, and kind of sturdy, which I think, I think the handle's deserved. I'm glad you like it. <laughs> Andrea feels an order coming on. Um, thank you, Anne. <laughs> so, so if it's her handbag, it'd have plenty of weight. Thank you, Rita. Can't wait to see the handles on. Yep, there you go. All done. All done and finished. And yes, those gold handles, uh, the gold rings, the big ones, would look really nice as well if you wanted to use those instead. Maybe a bigger bag if you're going to use those. Right, thank you very much. I sat out at six and had breakfast this morning. Oh, nice. I haven't had any breakfast yet today. And it's lunchtime now, isn't it? Um, Diana has a heavy oven mitt that works well for ironing the bags as well. That's a good idea. Um, thank you, Jean. Glad you like it. It'll be on the display of bags. The one in the middle, I'm sorry, I can't remember who asked. I just saw your comment. Isn't on YouTube, but it will be at some point. Because that's the one that I got wrong this morning. Um, so I need to revisit that one. Hi, Ellen. Um, thank you, Amanda. Right, it's getting really warm in here now, so I've still got ice in my Coke. And I'm going to go and sit in the sunshine for a bit with my Factor 50. How to sew a tailor's hand. Okay, let's have a look at it, because we're getting a lot of requests from that. Um, I can make, I'll make the one the same shape as the one I did in, in the book, because I've got all the measurements and everything for it. Then I just need to get hold of some sawdust. Um, which is what goes in the middle of them because I haven't got any so I need to, a visit to the pet shop um, so if you wanted to make one that's what's in the middle of it same same thing that you're going to put in your hamster's cage or your rabbit hutch see you Wednesday then Chris thank you very much Julie happy weekend to you Susan thank you um, so Wednesday what was I going to do on Wednesday still haven't got a round cushion so I'm not going to be doing that I did have a plan but I've forgotten so I'll have, a, I'll have a think about that one. My mouse has stopped working. I can't go if my mouse isn't working. You're going to stuck with me here all day. Can you imagine? <laughs> still here. Still sewing. Um, see you Wednesday, Olive. Have a nice day for the rest of your birthday today. Um, see you Wednesday, Helen. Thank you. Have a great day yourself, Colleen. Thank you too. Well, thank you for joining me. Do enjoy the rest of your weekend. And I shall see you again on Wednesday at four o'clock.